Hello, so today we're going to look at a, the trend of electronegativity or just even really look at what electronegativity is a, for the higher chemistry course. So electronegativity is uh, one of the other trends that can be observed in the periodic table and like ionisation energy you're given a list of electronegativity values on page 11 of the data booklet so on the same page as all the ionisation energy values for the element um, and as again like ionisation energy there is a standard definition for electronegativity that you need to learn so electronegativity is just the measure of an atom's attraction for bonding electrons and it's the bonding electrons that are important so in when we've been looking at covalent radius and ionization energy we've really been looking at talking about the atom's attraction for its own electrons specifically the outer ones however when it comes to electronegativity we're looking at the atom's attraction for bonding electrons so this is going to take you a little bit back to national five chemistry um, but I've drawn a wee diagram here just of two hydrogen atoms joined together so in order to become stable atoms will either form ions or they will form bonds with other atoms um, and depending on what the elements are or the at what types of elements um, are bonding together you'll get different types of bonding so between two hydrogen atoms it's a covalent bond because they are sharing a pair of electrons so that they can both have a stable electron arrangement. Okay, now what we're going to look at now with electronegativity is how attractive these atoms are to the bonding electrons. So because both the atoms have a positive nuclei, they are both attracted to those negative electrons that are being shared and that are whizzing around the outside of the nucleus. So that's what holds the atoms together because the positive nuclei are attracted to those negative electrons. So we're going to now look at what difference it makes if the nuclear charge is different um, to how attractive that atom is to bonding electrons. So the reasons for the trends that you see are actually very similar to ionisation energy um, and covalent radius, um, but we're going to look at them now. So if we look at across the period first, I've drawn lithium and fluorine, okay, so they're in the same period. And if you were to look at page 11 in the data booklet, you would see that lithium has an electronegativity value of 1 and fluorine has an electronegativity value of 4. So the higher the number, the more electronegative it is, which means it has a greater attraction for bonding electrons. Okay, so based on these electronegativity values, this is telling me that fluorine is more attractive to bonding electrons than lithium, a lithium atom is. So why is this? Well, we already know that when across a period, there becomes an increasing nuclear charge. So across the period, there's the same number of occupied energy levels. So the outer electrons are still the same distance from the nucleus, um, roughly. But the nuclear charge will either pull those in closer, depending on how strong it is. So because lithium has a three positive nuclear charge, whereas fluorine has a nine positive nuclear charge, that nuclear charge of the fluorine atom is greater, so that's going to have a greater attraction to any bonding electrons, as well as its own outer electrons, which is why we see a decrease in covalent radius going across a period, an increase in ionisation energy across a period, because you need more energy to remove an outer electron, and therefore we see an increase in electronegativity across a period, because as you go across, the period there's an increasing nuclear charge so therefore there's going to be a greater attraction for any bonding electrons. Okay so if we now look at going down a group, so lithium I picked again, it's got an electron activity of one and then just below that in the alkali metals group we've got sodium which has an electron negativity value of 0 0.9 so that means that lithium is more electronegative i.e. more attractive to bonding electrons than sodium is. So why is this? Well, as you go down the group, you get increasing numbers of occupied energy levels, which means you get an increased shielding effect on the nuclear charge. So any bonding electrons are not going to be as attracted to a sodium nucleus 
as they are to a lithium nucleus because the sodium has a greater shielding effect going on because of its the greater number of occupied energy levels. Okay, so just like for the explanation for ionisation energy going down a group, it's due to an increased shielding effect as a result of increased occupied energy levels shielding the nuclear charge. Okay, so because there's all these layers of electrons in front of the nuclear charge in sodium, that the bonding electrons, which are always in the outer shell, are not going to be experiencing as great as strong a nuclear charge as any bonding electrons uh, that are involved with the lithium atom. Okay?